50 Cent trying to take over TV, fellas. <laughs> Y'all know he's got all his power shows. Y'all know he's got um, ABC for Life. We also reported that he is going to be doing some kind of a um, family funny musical with Mary J. Blige on ABC. Well, he's got another show he's adding to stars, and it is called The Black Mafia Family. And it's going to star these three right here. You got your boy from, um, um, God, I can't think of what that show he was in, uh, Lincoln Heights. I loved him in Lincoln Heights. All and right. I think, I want to say, wasn't he in um, the, uh, the Wire too, Larry? I don't remember him in The Wire, but I definitely remember him in Lincoln Heights. He was in, which was a good show, ladies and gentlemen. And so here's, here's what they say about the Black Mafia family. The first non-power series produced by Curtis 50 Cent and his G-Unit television series on Stars has announced its first cast members. For all my Detroit people, Detroit, the D, the Detroit set series from Jackson and Riders and executive producer Randy Huggins has cast Russell Hornsby, Steve Harris in a series regular role and Detroit rapper Arkeisha Cash Dog Knight will be recurring. The description of Black Mafia family is inspired by the true story of two brothers who rose from the decaying streets of Southwest Detroit in the late 1980s and gave birth to one of the most influential crime families in the country. Fellas. It sounds like it's going to be good. I like the cast. I like the direction they're going. We talked about this just Wednesday. We talked about how T Stream said it. Detroit has a huge culture of individuals that have been in the crime family. Chicago does too. Um, so T Streams, considering we got a lot of Detroiters watching the stream, I give it to you. How do you feel about him bringing this story to life on Stars? You know, it was just honestly, man. It was uh, it was really just a matter of time that the uh, that the big meat story actually came out. Uh, you know, I think is I think at this particular moment is is a prime opportunity for it. Um, you know, for those you know for those that have actually uh, read some of the documentaries or saw some of them, you know, this stuff was like you know this organization was, was like really, really, you know, it was really, really big, you know, and it from Detroit all the way down South, it was, it was like a, a huge movement. And I, I trust, I trust 50 to do, to do the big meat story, some justice. Uh, you know, I would like, I would really like to see it. I, I didn't know that they was going to be, you know, doing any casting and stuff here in the city. That'd be nice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Hey, 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 look, look, me and Larry know that you, you we know you can get dressed up like Jermaine Dupree and shit, but man, look, you know, if you're gonna get if you're gonna get on the show, the only thing I can say is let me be your manager, let me handle the finances. I will triple your money. So if they come and find T streams and they man. start giving you the big checks, I will help you triple your income. Knowing my luck, I I I could I'd probably be lucky to be a to be a uh, extra. You, my role would be like this. <laughs> <laughs> so my brother Larry, the living legend. How do you feel about another star show, Black Mafia Family, based on a true story? I, <clears throat> I, you know, here's the thing. I'm I'm not so much thinking about the show. I'm sure it's gonna be good. Mm -hmm. What I really see from I, I'm starting to get an idea of what's going on with 50 Cent. I don't think that I mean, I think the content's important, but I think what he's doing is trying to rack up a number of these big successful shows and create a body of work because I think 50's aiming to have his own network. Okay. I think that's what he's I think that's what he's looking towards. I, I would not be at all surprised at if in maybe five years, we see a network that a, a G unit network or whatever he calls it network. That's going to be similar to something like stars or HBO or something like that, but it's going to have content that is more along the lines of what 
you know, black folks want to see where you're going to have stuff like power and, and, and this, uh, what do they call it? It's black mafia family or, or, you know, whatever other shows that the other one that's on ABC, I think he's going to, I think he's going to look to have his own network. And I think, you know, you don't think he can afford to have his own network now? No, not even close. Okay. No. So you I don't, mean, let, let me let me rephrase. You don't think that with his with the with the the resume he's written, he couldn't put together an investment group that would help him get a network. He can try, but think about the last black person out there that put together their own network. You know who that is? Byron Allen. Nah, he he was before this person. Uh, Oprah. Shoot, um, didn't um, oh, it's Oprah. What, what about your boy that owns uh, Southwest? He owned BET Network. Nah, BET's owned by white people. Yeah, but it was bought from Bob Bob whatever his name is. He owned about, Bob. The, the John, you talking about Johnson? Yeah, no, Bob no, that's, that's a dude. Is it Bob Johnson? It was Bob Johnson. He sold BET to white people. Yeah, but that was, I mean, but you're talking about he started, I mean, that was that was decades ago. He sold yeah. he sold BET like like 20 years ago. Yeah, he did. You know? He did. So, but I, I but you know, what's his name? Uh Byron Allen. He's had the Weather Channel, I think it is, and some other stuff. He's had that for a while. He's he's been sort of under the radar with it, but he doesn't create content. No. That is specific to black people. He's just been one of those media moguls that's kind of quietly moved and made stuff happen. Hey, hey, but, hey, the weather is specific to black women. You ain't going to catch a black woman running outside and <laughs> it's, it's humid out there now. You better stop there before you get us. No, in I, I, I hear you. I definitely hear you on that. Hey. You don't want to get you don't want anybody's uh, wig getting messed up. Nah, bro. But, I mean, Oprah. Oprah is probably the last black person that started a network, and I mean, you see what it took. It's it's Oprah, you yeah. know. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bill Cosby tried to. Bill Cosby at one point tried to buy NBC, I think it was, and they shut him down. It, I mean, it's probably it's probably a little bit easier now than it has been in the past because of cable TV and all the cable channels that are available, and but. The reality of it is it's still extraordinarily difficult because now, even in today's climate, where you have all these people cord cutting and people leaving cable and going to streaming only, and or you have people that these even people that are younger, like part of uh the pre, you know, whatever what's this current generation? I forgot what they have them not the I guess the millennials are right after that. They're calling them, you know. Never, uh, what are they? We call us because we're called cord cutters, so they're I guess they're never, never, never something because yeah. they've never even, huh? I was about to say, um, they, they they're they're a new name beyond cord cutters, and I can't think of that term they use for them at this point. Yeah, it's something, it's it's they're never somethings because they never had cable, and so I mean, it's it becomes increasingly difficult to get new networks on the air because you have to then convince all of the cable companies to carry your network and then on top of that you want your network to be on the lowest tier of their service so it gets into as many households as possible because if you start a new network and you end up on like the third tier so let's say that you that let's say you and i get cable and we get the cheap package at 29 dollars a month and that twenty nine dollars mm -hmm. a month gets us HBO or not HBO. It gets us CNN and 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 VH one and Bravo and all the little basic cable TV uh, channels. That's where you want to be at because everybody gets those channels. But then you have to worry about moving up to the next level. So now instead of paying twenty nine dollars a month, now you're paying eighty nine dollars a month to get up to the next ones where you get like ESPN. And, you know, and maybe BET and Smithsonian Channel and some of those ones. And then if you're a new network, you're going to get put on that third tier where somebody is paying even more. And that's where you don't want to be. But that's where right. the new ones go. And so it makes it even that much more difficult for a new cable uh, channel to succeed. And so, I mean, I think he's going for it. And I think he's going to get to a point where people are associate his channel with him in his in his type of content so that there will be a a base of people willing to pay that premium to get his channel and because there will be so much uh 
there will be so much excitement for it that the cable companies might be willing to put it on a lower tier to begin with. So I think that's where he's headed. I wouldn't be so surprised to see it in the next five years or so. All right. Well, we'll be following the story. We'll possibly be reviewing it. Sounds like it's going to be good. We'll probably have T-Streams come back to help us review it.